Hi everybody, it's October 9, 2016. I have heard from a number of subscribers just in these past two weeks telling me that they are experiencing symptoms related to the electromagnetic frequencies, microwave radiation, the RF frequencies coming from cell phone towers and cell phones and Wi-Fi. And I do know that they have to increase the frequencies in order to maintain what we see in the sky, that incredibly thick coverage of white substance from horizon to horizon. They have to increase the frequencies to maintain that. Now, I wish that I could find that particular paper that I read years ago that I posted on my original Kafka Winston World channel, but I can't. But it, it kind of um, makes sense. If they're going to be covering the entire sky from horizon to horizon with this thick white substance, they are going to have to use frequencies to hold it in place. Hurricane Matthew, as it made its way up the East Coast, required a tremendous amount of frequencies. And Scott Anthony posted a video last night, and I will link to it below. And he captured um, rather a strange anomaly coming off this storm when it was in North Carolina. And these are like frequencies off the charts. I don't know what it is. So I could be wrong about that. But the reason why so many of you have been experiencing a your symptoms getting worse, intensifying, and those of you who are experiencing new symptoms, I do believe is related to microwave radiation, the RF frequencies that we are exposed to, saturated in 24 seven. And I will tell you that I have been feeling really pretty bad physically. Um, I've experienced anxiety and I'm not somebody who experiences anxiety. And in fact, I feel it a little bit now, like kind of like my insides are racing and uh, that's not me. I don't normally experience things like that. Um, I will say that I have been rather irritable and have been having to work hard at uh, controlling it. Um, I've heard from subscribers who are feeling very depressed, depressed, sorry, um, absolutely exhausted, can't function, um, and having a lot of brain fog. They can't think clearly. Um, and even just trying to leads them to just crash. Like they just, it, it's really kind of rendering an awful lot of people completely dysfunctional. They can't function just even on a basic level, doing just basic things on a daily basis. This is really dangerous stuff. This is very serious stuff. <laughs> it's a very serious topic and it needs, we need to somehow try to educate Americans those Americans who are walking around, they can't see, they can't smell, they can't taste, they can't touch these frequencies. So they think that they're safe. They've heard from the telecommunications industry. They think they're safe because these telecommunication experts have told them that and they won't even consider 
that they're being lied to by these quote unquote experts, that's unfortunate because our population is really getting very sick. Children are getting sick, adults are getting sick. And unfortunately, there are adults who have been told that the Wi-Fi in their home may be making them ill and they refuse to get rid of it, even just for a period of time to see if they would feel better. So convenience trumps their health now? Or is it the frequencies that is making them so incredibly irresponsible and stupid that they just continue living saturated in dangerous frequencies in their own home that may very well be the reason why they're going back and forth to doctors. I've known several of them and I have to tell you, it is incredibly frustrating. And you know, for a period of time, I had sympathy or empathy for these people. I don't anymore. When you are telling them that your condition could absolutely be because of the Wi-Fi and they can't get rid of it because why? Because of the convenience of walking their laptop into the kitchen, into the living room, into the bedroom as their health deteriorates. That to me is mental illness. And a lot of you know that I am hypersensitive to these frequencies and I have been moving for years trying to find a location that I won't be so affected by them and I haven't found it. Um, when I first moved to this new place, I did experience relief. Now something happened weeks afterwards. The buzzing got louder and the woman who lives in this house also said the buzzing got a lot louder in one of her ears. Um, she feels the vibrations coming from the earth while well, we have a Gwen Tower not too far away. Gwen Towers, the, the um, electromagnetic frequencies go right through the ground. Um, and I will say that, yeah, I absolutely feel it with my brain. Uh, it's getting harder to stay on point. It's really hard to just gather my thoughts enough to do a video. It's hard to read. I have to really pay attention to my pronunciation and I have to pay attention to saying the wrong word or saying the opposite of what I mean. So when I'm saying the word up, I'm saying down. When I say close, when I want to say close, I say open. I, I, and this is happening more and more frequently. My memory is absolutely worse, um, but it's the pressure in my brain that has actually lessened a little bit today. But during this storm, I was noticing it a lot. So I wanted to bring your attention to uh, Dr. George Carlo, who is a public health scientist and epidemiologist who headed a 28 million research program funded by the cell phone industry from 1993 through 1998. And what did his studies prove? That the frequencies are dangerous and the wireless industry is committing scientific fraud by producing papers, calling them science, and saying that the frequencies are safe. And I will link below to this video, but if you just put in Dr. George Carlo, you will come up with an awful lot of videos with this man talking about how unsafe, dangerous are the frequencies. And this is a guy that worked for the industry. I found this article, which is really comprehensive. Do you have microwave sickness? 
and this article is based on Dr. George Carlo's studies. So I want to run down some of the symptoms which I know that probably most of you are experiencing today. Microwave radiation coming from cell phone towers, coming from cell phones, coming from smart meters, coming from Wi-Fi. You know, think about the children who are sitting in schools. They are saturated in Wi-Fi, in the microwave frequencies all day long, all day long, because they have Wi-Fi now in schools. And that was one of Obama's uh, big programs, big pushes. Let's get Wi-Fi in schools. Well, that was deliberate to cause these children to be very sick. And it's easier to indoctrinate them because they can actually control the minds with these frequencies. So you see cell towers on school property, Wi-Fi in schools. They're all being given these uh, gadgets now. They're all working on computers. The younger generation in public schools today are being fried. And it is, well, if you're not upset about that, you need to take a look at yourself in the mirror and ask yourself why. But the truth of the matter, your cell phone and your Wi-Fi might very well indeed be making you and those around you sick. Symptoms are insomnia and other sleep disturbances, headaches, swollen lymph nodes, depression, anxiety, loss of appetite, hypoxia, which is lack of oxygen getting into your tissues, inability to concentrate, forgetfulness, dizziness, irritability, nausea, hyperactivity, fatigue, vision problems, dry eyes, eye inflammation, weakened immune system, allergies, frequent, frequent urination, night sweats, extreme thirst. And these symptoms very often suddenly appear in people who have had a cell phone tower installed nearby their home. Microwave exposure induces oxidative damage, leading to depletion of the body's natural store of antioxidants like um, catalase and melatonin and other antioxidants. And when the body becomes depleted in antioxidants, then you experience premature aging, increased infections, and sticky blood, which are just a few of the consequences. And it's interesting, when I read sticky blood a couple of weeks ago, I went to get blood tests and three, um, two like doctor assistants tried to get my blood. Then the doctor tried to get my blood. And then the doctor finally, because for some reason my veins were like, they, they couldn't see my veins. They couldn't get my veins. Um, I've never had a hard time with uh, um, anybody trying to get blood from me. And suddenly I'm there and they can't find the veins. And then the doctor finally finds the veins and literally could not draw blood. So I'm reading this sticky blood and I'm thinking, oh, is that what was going on? Who knows? But um, microwaves have all also been known to affect an abnormal influx of calcium into cells. When there is an abnormal influx of calcium into mast cells, for example, they produce histamine. Hence the reason why we have so many people who are coming down with allergies of all different types. We have adults who never had allergies before. I mean, the onset of allergies is now in their 40s and 50s and 60s. That should not be happening. Well, it's happening because we're now living 24-7 with dangerous frequencies. Microwave exposure has also been known to induce mitochondria dysfunction. Mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell. Dysfunctional mitochondria will interfere with the cell's ability to produce energy and can be linked to fatigue and possibly even obesity. 
look at our obese population. Microwaves have also been shown to depolarize the body's red blood cells. This will cause the red blood cells to clump together. And when that happens, the amount of oxygen getting into the brain cells and the cells of the body's other organs is diminished substantially, leading to hypoxia. And the hypoxia is the cells are getting less oxygen. And that can cause symptoms similar to altitude sickness, nausea, dizziness, inability to concentrate. Microwave exposure has been shown in studies to induce a decrease in the numbers of natural killer cells. It's a form of white blood cell, which is the body's first line of defense against pathogens. This leads to the body's weakened ability to recover from viral and other types of infections. People exposed to microwave radiation would take longer than normal to recover from day-to-day -day infections. Exposure to long-term microwave radiation has been shown to change a particular form of white blood cell ratio known as the T helper, T suppressor cell ratio from normal to abnormal. Abnormalities in this um, ratio has been shown to lead to an increased susceptibility to viral, fungal, and bacterial infections. And symptoms include sore throats, low-grade fevers, weakness, persistent fatigue, and swollen lymph glands. In fact, Research has shown that exposure to microwaves and other electromagnetic radiation has been shown to increase viruses, bacteria, mold, parasites, and yeast in the blood. And microwave exposure has been shown to cause a decrease of 5-H in the blood, 5-HT in the blood. And when that happens, it lessens the hormone serotonin in your brain, which can lead to anxiety and depression and suicide. It can also cause a decrease in levels of noroephrine. Ephrine, I'm sorry, I'm, I've always had difficulty pronouncing that word. Noroephrine, okay, you can read it and, but, this hormone is essential for control of the autonomic nervous system. And lack of it can lead to autonomic nervous system disorders. And if it's not working properly, if that nervous system is not working properly, the body will have trouble regulating its temperature, cooling itself when it's warm and heating itself when it is cold. And this could lead to feeling colder than one would normally when it is cold and feeling warmer than one would normally when it's warm. And an abnormal decrease in this hormone and the, the levels can be connected to short-term memory disturbances and depression. The uh, melatonin decrease, well, that would lead to sleep disturbances. And a drop in melatonin levels has also been connected with an increase in breast cancer. Dopamine, another hormone that microwave radiation can cause a drop in dopamine that can also lead to depression. Um, exposure to electromagnetic radiation has been shown to affect an abnormal drop in the levels of the neurotransmitter acid Acetylcholine. Wow. You go back and listen to the videos that I've posted, and you will know that I used to be able to say these words. Scary. But a drop in the level of that neurotransmitter has been linked to a number of neurological and neuromuscular disorders, including Alzheimer's disease. It can also induce restlessness and may be responsible for a syndrome called restless leg syndrome. And I'm reading it like that because I have a friend 
who is sensitive to frequencies but also has restless leg syndrome. Now, there are many other symptoms which you can read on your own. I have stopped at 15 and you can start from 16 on to 22. But at the end of the article, all that is necessary for evil to triumph is for good people to do nothing. Our telecommunications industry knows that the frequencies are set way too high and they are making us ill, very sick, not just physically, but mentally, emotionally, spiritually. And if you click on this link, the author of this article, and he's an MA, has an advanced degree in Japanese studies and psychology, but he links to an updated article, which you can just click on the link. But here at the top, he has pamphlets that you could um, print out. And I will link below all that. No, I'm sorry. It came up in WordPad. So you have to go to that link and click on it. You can print out, do you have microwave or EMR sickness? And what is great about what he has done here is that he has provided all of the studies that proves that what he is saying about these symptoms are true. So there is no denying to anybody that studies have not been done on microwave radiation, the microwave frequencies, and it, we cannot say that it's safe anymore. They cannot deny the countless symptoms that these frequencies are causing. And at the top here, he says, all truth passes through three stages. First, it is ridiculed. Second, it is violently opposed. And third, it is accepted as being self-evident. And that from Arthur Schopenhauer, uh, a Nazi. It is unfortunate that we are living what we are living today. Many of us who are hypersensitive to these frequencies have had our life turn into a nightmare that is never ending. This is not what life should be. This is, this is a few at the top. <laughs> able to make extraordinary amounts of money at the expense of our health. This is man doing this. And the only way that we can possibly stop and get the frequencies reduced to a safe level because other countries have done it is if we wake up more people and once awake, they actually care. There's something wrong with people who know this, have this information, and they don't even care enough to get rid of the Wi-Fi to improve their own health. So something is drastically wrong with our population. But to all of you who are feeling like you're just ready to give up, you can't take it anymore, trust me. I completely understand where you are at. But for all of you who are struggling and getting through each day, you give me the strength to keep going. And I hope the reverse is true, that when you hear that I'm really struggling, but I'm still alive and I'm still doing the best that I can, that you too will try and do your best 
And most importantly, do your best to try to reach other people because this is only going to get worse. These frequencies are only, it, it's the extraordinary exponential increase in disease, illness, syndromes, chronic pain, mental illness. There's a reason for it. Now the reason is, um, there are numerous reasons because we are living now eating foods that are not sustaining good health. I mean, most of the population are taking medications and psychiatric medications also, um, unfortunately, cause an awful lot of adverse reactions. Fukushima radiation, radiation leaking from nuclear power plants. The water we're drinking is not, it's poison. So there are numerous reasons, but these frequencies, because of the invisibility, because people can't see them, they think they're safe. These frequencies are extraordinarily dangerous and it's got to stop. If it doesn't stop, more and more of us will die. That I can guarantee you. All of the links are below. Thanks guys for listening. I know that this is a long one.